In this lesson for day 6.4, we're going to take a look at the relationships created with segment lengths within a circle. And remember that we have different segments when it comes to circles called tangents, chords, and secants. So in the previous lesson, we looked at when um, angles and arcs are created by these intersecting lines or segments. Well, now we're going to look at the segment length relationship. Remember, we're using length for this. Okay, underline that word length. That means we are not using degrees for anything that we are doing really unless we're talking about an angle or an arc. But right now we're taking a look at the relationship between segment lengths. And so we'll explain a little bit more of the background of this in class, but we're just going to go over the basic uh, formulas and setup for these different kind of segments that are created. Now, we're actually going to start by talking about when two chords intersect. Now, you'll notice you don't have these drawings in your notes. I want you to pause every so often uh, when we go to talk about this and copy them down the best you can. Um, I understand uh, it's not going to be a perfect circle that you draw every time, but I do want you to understand uh, what this looks like, so I've added these drawings into my notes. So we're going to start talking about uh, when two chords intersect, all right? Chord CD and chord AB. And that creates a unique relationship of these side, uh, or so these length segments where these two points intersect at E. I have purposefully put this picture in here because E is not the center of the circle. These are going to be different lengths most of the time. And so this relationship that we have then, um, I'm just going to refer to these segment lengths rather than call this segment CE. I'm just going to give it the length C. I'm going to give this the length B, and this the length A, and this the length D. Okay, so I'm just going to give them these lengths with lowercase letters to help you understand this. When we have two chords that intersect inside a circle, we get this relationship. A times B has to equal C times D. All right, this technically is what we would call an inverse proportion. Instead of dividing as a ratio, we use the products. But A and B are parts of the same chord, so the two parts of the same chord have a product that is equal to the two parts of the other chord. Okay, now when we have um, two secants that intersect, all right, when we look at this one, when I have two secants that intersect, again, I'm gonna use parts here. I'm going to call this outside part A and this inside part B. On this other secant, I'm going to call the outside part C and the inside part D. Now, when these intersect outside of the circle, it is no longer the exact same setup as this, but we are using a product. In words, what I like to say for two secants is that the outside part times the whole secant segment length, so the whole thing, must equal the other outside part times the other whole segment, segment length. So what that means for my specific letters I've written in here, this outside portion A times the whole thing, well, to think of the whole thing, remember part plus part equals whole. So the whole thing is A plus B. And the other side of this, for the other secant, the outside part is C, and the whole thing is D plus C, or C plus D. All right? Which leads us to our next example, where we have one tangent segment and one secant. And it's really the same setup as previous. For the secant, we have an outside part. This is our secant, because it intersects the circle twice. Okay, I'm going to call that one uh, B, the outside part is B, and this inside part is C. Okay, so the outside part B times the whole thing B plus C is equal to this other relationship. Well, when I have a tangent, the outside part is the whole thing. So when I do outside times whole, it's really outside, we'll call it A, times itself, squared. Outside times whole becomes just outside squared.
Okay, so this a value times itself becomes a squared times or equals this outside part times the whole thing. All right, well that leads us back to a th uh, the beginning when I have two tangents. When I have two tangents, we're doing the same thing we just did on one tangent, one secant, but since they're both tangents, the outside part for this one is the whole thing, and the outside part for this one is the whole thing. So if I called those A and B, and I kind of followed the same rule that I have outside squared replacing outside times whole, that means this should just be A squared equals B squared. But if A squared equals B squared, this is a whole lot simpler. A has to equal B. Okay? So the trick for this lesson is just identifying which formula to use and applying it. Okay, so we just have to figure out which picture this looks like and apply each of these rules. So we're going to go ahead and do a few examples. In our first example, we're going to do with this one. Um, this is an example of when we have two chords intersecting. Okay, so it looks like this. It's our two chords intersecting, so it's just the product of two pieces equals the product of the other two pieces. All right, so it's A times B equals C times D. Well, to solve this for X, we're just going to set that up. A and B are two parts of the same chord, so that's X and 10 for one of them. And then that should equal the product of the other two chords, 14 times 15, or other two chord pieces. Now, you could have flipped this equation around backwards and it would still work, but the X goes with the 10 because they're parts of the same chord and the 14 and 15 go together because they're parts of the same chord. So we just multiply, okay? 14 times 15 is 210, and then this is just 10x, or x times 10. So we divide by 10 on both sides, and x is 21. Okay? So let's move on to another type of problem, okay? On this problem, we have two secants that intersect. And since I have two intersecting secants, we are using this formula that outside times whole equals outside times whole, or A times A plus B equals C times C plus D. So I'm just going to plug those parts in. A and B come from one of the secants, C and D come from the other one. So I'm going to call the top one my A and B. This would be A, this is B. That means this is C, and X is in the place of our D. So we're going to set this up like this. The outside portion, 10, times the entire thing, 10 plus 42, should also equal this outside portion, 13, times the entire thing, 13 plus X. And then we start to simplify. I don't have to distribute on the left because I can just add the two parts inside and multiply by 10. 10 plus 42 is 52, so that's 10 times 52 there. On this side, I will need to distribute. So that should equal 13x, I'm going to put that term first, I don't know why I did it backwards, plus 13 times 13, which is 169. 10 times 52 here is 520. And we keep solving through that, subtracting 169 from both sides. We get 351 equals 13x. And divide by 13, we get x is 27. But they also want the length of nl. Well, nl is that x value plus 13. So that becomes 27 plus 13, which is 40. And that's how we find those answers. So a lot of this lesson is just setting up the right equation and solving that equation. All right, we're going to do one more example, and then this will conclude our video for today. We're going to take a look at this last one. In this last problem, we've got a little bit more um, information given to us. We have an expression, 5x minus 1, for this missing piece here. 
but we also know that this is a tangent. So this time we're doing a tangent and a secant. Well, that relationship, tangent and secant, was this, that this tangent segment squared has to equal outside times whole. Okay, so we have our a squared is what equals b times b plus c. Well, this a value is 16, our b value is 8, our c value is 5x minus 1. So we start off with a squared, or 16 squared, equals the outside part 8 times the entire thing. Remember, we get our entire thing by adding these pieces together, 8 plus 5x minus 1. So there's just some combining like terms to do here. 16 squared is 256. And then I'm going to combine some like terms before I distribute. 8 minus 1 is 7, so that's 5x minus 7. And then I'm going to distribute. 256 equals Sorry, 8 times 5 is 45. Let me fix that. Sorry, 8 times 5 is 40. Not 45. 40x minus 8 times 7 is 56. And we go through and we solve this by adding 56 to both sides. I'm coming over here. 256 plus another 56. Be careful that you add. Don't subtract. We have an... Um, well, I'm just making all kinds of uh, mistakes in the video. I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to fix it here. Hopefully, you're paying attention. You caught the fact that 8 minus 1 is positive 7, not minus 7. So when I distribute, I still get a plus 56. So I do want to subtract 56 from both sides, which makes it 200 equals 40x divided by 40, and x is 5. All right, now to find the value of np, not the full thing, np, just np, we're going to go here, and we're going to do 5 times 5 minus 1, or 25 minus 1, and that's 24. All right, that finishes our video uh, notes so far. We've got some other examples here and on the back that we're going to get to in class, but this gives you an introduction. Please make sure that you are studying lessons 1, 2, and 3 for your quiz next class. This lesson is not on the quiz. So make sure you've gone back and you've re-watched those videos if you need to or looked at your notes for lessons one, two, and three. Come in and act lab if you have any extra questions.